Hey everyone, this is Brian Lagunas, and in this short video, I'm going to show you how to create a brand new WPF application using .NET Core 3. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first step to creating a .NET Core 3 WPF app is to make sure you have .NET Core 3 installed. So the first thing you want to do is go to github.com slash .NET slash core setup, and you want to make sure you have the .NET Core runtimes and libraries and all that host stuff installed. Most likely you do, but if you don't, just scroll on down to daily builds, pick which one you care about. In my case, I am the master on x64. Uh, install the one that works for you. Next, you're going to want to go to the github.com.net slash core dash SDK. This is going to give you the latest .NET Core 3 SDK that we will be building against. So once again, find your platform of choice, click your installer, install it, and you're good to go. So I'm on a Windows machine, so we're gonna jump into Visual Studio. Let's go ahead and start by creating a new WPF application. Uh, call it whatever you want. My Core 3 app will work just fine. So once your application is created, let's just go ahead and close all these windows. I don't care about the designer. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unload this project. I'm gonna do this by right clicking and selecting unload project. What this is gonna do is it's gonna allow me to edit the CS project file. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit this file by right clicking and saying edit my CS project file. We're gonna wait for Visual Studio to respond and open this file. Now you may recognize this nastiness of a CS project file. This has tons and tons of just mess in it. Well, I'm gonna say control A to select all the elements within the CS project file. I'm going to delete it because I do not care about this anymore. Now, what we wanna do is convert this to the new SDK style project format. So we're gonna start by typing a new project element and we're going to set the SDK property to Microsoft.net dot SDK dot WPF. Perfect. Now we want to create a new property group here. And in this property group, we need an output type. And that output type is going to be a win exe. Next, we want to set our target framework here. And our target framework is obviously going to be net core app 3.0. And then we want to set an assembly name, which in this case, I called it my core three app. Sweet. All right, next, we need to create an item group. And in this item group, we're gonna set the application uh, definition here. So we'll say application definition. And we're going to include our app dot XAML. Now I want to include a page and this page is going to be our main window.xaml. And then one last thing and we will be done is we're going to add another item group and we're going to add a framework reference. And we're going to include Microsoft.desktop UI. Beautiful. So now the next step is to simply reload our project. Uh, it's closed. Yeah, let's go ahead and close it because it's already open. And sometimes you'll get this message, but keep in mind, uh, it does support it. It will run this. It's early bits. So just hit OK. Now we're going to get a build error and I'm going to show you what it is. So let's go ahead and just do a build. And this is a trick when you're debugging uh, .NET Core 3 WPF apps is it says build failed. So if you look in your error list, you're like, wait a minute, I don't have any errors, I don't have any warnings. What's my, what's my build problem? Go to your output window. This is gonna tell you what the issue is. And if you see here, it says, oh yeah, we have duplicate attributes here, company, configuration, file version. Uh, actually, what I want you to do is, I just want you to delete your properties folder altogether. And I like to delete the app config as well. I don't like it unless I need it. And I don't need it. 
If I do need it, I will add it back. But for now, I'm going to start empty. Now let's go ahead and do a build. We have a succession. So let's go ahead and run our WPF application. And voila, there's our WPF application running just fine on .NET Core 3, which is pretty awesome and it was pretty easy to do. Uh, I do want to point out a couple of things before we end this video. I want you to notice in the Solution Explorer here, our code behind files are no longer tucked underneath as a child to our XAML files. Uh, that is just a tooling issue that will be fixed as .NET Core 3 matures and before it releases. But just keep in mind, all these files are going to be uh, flattened out for now. Also, when you go to edit your XAML, uh, it's going to be ugly. You have no designer, right? So there's no way to show any type of designer. And as soon as you start typing something like, we'll add a uh, text block and we'll set the uh, text to hello world. Normally, actually this is working, I, I can't believe it. Uh, normally I get a ton of like blue squigglies here and my entire views are just trash. Uh, but if we go ahead and run the application again, and we can see that our hello world is there in the top right corner because I didn't send it or anything. Uh, but if you do get a, a ton of squigglies in your, in your file, in your view, uh, just ignore it. It makes it hard to type your XAML, uh, but it does work. It just looks really bad. And I wonder if I can get those squigglies to, to show up somehow. So we'll see. Uh, horizontal alignment center. Oh, oh, there we go. I got it to show up. So now imagine you have an entire view of just stuff in there and everything is underlined blue. Uh, just keep that in mind. Sometimes you might need to do a rebuild. So if, I think it'll go away if I do a rebuild. I can temporarily get those blue lines to disappear. Uh, once again, that's just a, a tooling issue which will be fixed. But that's how easy it is to create a new WPF application on .NET Core 3. Hope you enjoyed the video.